The Black Flame Rogue is a lethal assassin that is free from the constraints of having a conscience. This assassin only cares about one thing, whether the contract pays enough. Relying on merciless and efficient tactics, the Black Flame Rogue assassinates everything within mere seconds, whether the target is nearby or in the distance. Add to that that the Black Flame Rogue is extremely proficient in combat using dual daggers, the arts of Black Flame magic and is also gifted with the rare power of the Rune of Death. And with that is one of the few in the entire world that can use the Forbidden Arts of Death magic. I think by now it's obvious that the Black Flame Rogue is extremely dangerous and at no point in time do you want to cross paths with this mercenary. This build is a build you can make at any point in the game. The early game build is pretty much the late game build as the main weapons in the video will stay the same. But at the same time the build gets more finesse to it while you progress through the game and every now and then you can add another epic piece to the build to make it even stronger. However you can establish the core of this build and get a lot of good stuff really early on in a new playthrough and I will therefore cover the build in its entirety. So the early, mid and late game in this video and show you how this OP build naturally evolves. The Black Flame Rogue is known to use daggers and daggers only. Due to the flexibility, utility and speed of this weapon class, this seems to be the perfect tool for the assassin. But wait, all this time I've been hearing that daggers suck in Eldering. Or do they? Now in my opinion the best way to use daggers is not to make a bleed or poison build out of them. The thing with daggers is, is if you want to make a bleed or bleed poison build you're much off better using curved swords, katanas, twin blades and really a lot of other weapon classes as well because it's just much more reliable to get bleed procs with those types of weapons. But daggers have other benefits going for them and one of those benefits is that the weapon with the highest critical damage in the entire game is in fact a dagger. This is the Mystery Lord Dagger and this weapon is actually really good and definitely a must for any dagger build because why would you rely on proking bleed when you can just critically hit something and do so much damage with just one step it just kills off your enemy. See an actual competent assassin knows exactly where to step. He enters combat, pierces a vital organ and two seconds later the enemy is dead. And afterwards the rogue just vanishes into the shadows onto its next targets. So one of the two daggers we're going to use is definitely going to be the Misery Cord. The other dagger that you'll want to use is the Black Knife. Now this dagger is together with the Misery Cord in the top two most powerful daggers in my opinion. And that's why you want to use both of these daggers in conjunction. The Misery Cord has you covered in melee territory. Well, the Black Knife has you covered for ranged combat and I will go into detail about these two weapons in a second. But let's first talk about daggers in general. Because the best way to build a dagger or even a dual dagger build is in my opinion to scale daggers through Fate. And the Black Knife scales really well with Fate and the Misery Cord is very flexible as well. And one of the best options for it is actually also scaling it with Fate. But that's not all because scaling your daggers through Fate makes it also possible for you to use a lot of incantations and one of the groups of incantations in the game that you'll want to use are the black flame incantations aesthetically and thematically these incantations fit an assassin build very well and they also harmonize well with the black knife's blade of death because they also sap away hp from your enemy after you hit your enemies with a black flame spell these incantations are also the better option for a rogue compared to making it a poison based rogue as you can just spam these incantations and this will make the damage over time tick much faster relatively speaking compared to poison in addition to the massive immediate damage that the black flame spells hit your enemies with in the first place so we definitely want to use this school of magic now let's go a bit more into detail about the two daggers that i mentioned before and why they're so good and how to get them very early on 
Funny enough, you can get the Black Knife before getting the Mystery Court, even though the Mystery Court is in Limgrave and the Black Knife is all the way in the Altus Plateau region. The reason for this is simple, because the Mystery Court is in Stormvale, so you have to defeat Market for it at least. If you want to start making this build at the very start of a new playthrough, you want to do a few things. First of all, go to the Red Main Castle in Kaelid. Ignore all the mobs there while you run through this place, and you will be able to pick up the Red Hot Wet Blade. This is very important that you do this before you go to the Altus Plateau region to pick up the black knife because otherwise you will have to defeat Radon to get another chance to obtain this wet blade. Then after doing so you want to go to the western part of Kaelid near the Fort Gill north side of Grace. Next to this Grace will be an invisible scarab roaming the area as you will see with the white marks on the ground. Hunt down the scarab and kill it and doing so will give you the flame of the red mains Ash of War. This is a really good Ash of War especially to set up easy critical hits. This is because with flame of the red mains you can just stance break everything in the game pretty much and more importantly you can do so very easily usually with only like two or three casts of this Ash of War. After stance breaking your enemies you get a nice opportunity to go in for the critical hit and since we will be using the misery cord this will fit the idea of the build very well but we don't have the misery cord yet and if if you're making this build at the start of the game you want to instead go to the round table hold first and just buy a normal dagger and also make sure to get the spirit ashes and the bell to summon the reason why we're buying this is because we need to defeat a pretty strong boss to obtain the black knife which you can in fact get at the start of the game and the reason this boss is so strong is because he's using our weapon and can thus easily one shot you if you do this very early on so getting some vigor is also advised in the altus plateau region you want to go to this place exactly this is where you will find the black knife assassin sitting in front of the entrance of the sainted hero's grave Using your summons and chain stance breaking this guy to get easy critical hits with the normal dagger should make relatively quick work of him. Just make sure that the wolves tank him as much as possible. And you can also use the terrain to reset his position if you want to reset his aggro or want to get a breeder. Ultimately after defeating him you will get the black knife. Now if you don't know how to get to the Altus Plateau region, so the actual region itself, at the start of the game then you can check the link in the description to guide you and show you the easiest and fastest way to get here at the start of the game. And now that you have the black knife, you can start obliterating everything in a really elegant way. This Ash 4 also gets bonus points because the animation for it is very nice. And it feels also more like a sorcery or an incantation. Because for an Ash of War, it has a really long range. And that's exactly also why it fits this build very well. Because it will pair up really nicely with the Misery Cord that we'll want to use for melee range. And why is this dagger so good? Well, the Ash of War, Blade of Death, has really nice immediate damage. But it will also reduce the target gets maximum HP for a period of time and during a fight you will see this because the HP bar will get smaller and at the same time it also reduces your enemies current HP it keeps sapping damage from them and this makes it a really good Ash of War whether it's early mid or late game as this mechanic scales accordingly and makes sure that you can always just melt whatever you're fighting add to that that this Ash of War comes out really fast so you can just spam it and accordingly ramp up the damage on whatever you're facing really fast as well. Combine that also with the fact that the Ash of War gives you a lot of hyper armor when you're in the air casting it. So even if you get hit while casting you will still be able to send out the blade of death pretty much always and with that reliably always get the damage in and quickly kill off everything. This is a really good Ash of War and to be honest you can just make a build with only this dagger and only this Ash of War and you will just beat the game like that. But to make this build the strongest but also the most fun dagger build we're also going to add other stuff to it and the black knife fits the theme of the build that we were going to end up with very well because it harmonizes with black flame incantations and like i said previously pairs up well with the misery cord that has covered us in melee range while this dagger covers us for enemies that are in the distance you also definitely want to use this dagger and its ash of war always as an opener because then the first thing you will do is reduce your enemy's hp bar and give you an advantage at the start of the fight now if you have gone on the trip of obtaining the black knife at the start of the game then kill Killing Margaret is going to be really easy and after killing Margaret you will be able to enter Stormville to pick up the Misery Court. The Misery Court is located right here in Stormville and it's going to be locked behind a fog wall where you'll have to use stone sword keys 
you definitely want to rush to it and get it and then put the flame of the red mains asher 4 on it and make sure while doing so to give it the flame art affinity which should be an option now considering we picked up the red hot wet blade the flame art will make the dagger skill with fate and have fire damage which is exactly what we want and i will talk about this a little bit more later on in this video Now, like I said, you always want to use Flame of the Red Mains as a staggering tool. But in addition to that, it will also deal nice AoE damage thanks to our stat distribution and the fact that we have skilled our Missy Court with Fate. It has a nice arc shape, basically it will just hit everything in front of you and it has a nice range as well. But when you actually use it to stagger stuff and then combine it with the Missy Court and its incredibly high critical damage value that I talked about earlier, every critical hit will take a massive chunk of your enemy's HP bar or even just one shot them. And that's why the Missy Court is just the ultimate weapon for a build that focuses on getting critical hits in. In addition, the Missy Court also has other benefits because the dagger's main weakness in Elden Ring, at least if you use them in melee range, is their range. So you usually have to stand very close to whatever you're fighting to get damage in. But the Mystery Court kind of offsets this weakness, as out of all of the daggers in the game, it's the dagger with the longest range. Adding all of these different things up makes the Mystery Court, in my opinion, definitely the best dagger for when you want to use its blade to damage things. That's also why you want to use the Mystery Court in our main hand, so we can profit of its range to hit enemies that are close. But more importantly, so we can always use Flame of the Red Mains instantly and get those critical hits in quickly. And in the other hand you'll want to use the black knife. If you want to use this as your 4 you can just simply do this with two handing your left weapon and then you will be able to cast the blade of that. And since you want to use the as your 4 on enemies that are in the distance and those will be situations where you can't actually use the mystery cord. Two handing your black knife to cast the Ash of War is a really nice solution and a nice way to use both of our Ashes of War to pretty much cover every situation of combat in Elden Ring. Having both daggers equipped also makes you able to power sense your daggers with LB or L1 so you can start hitting your enemies with both your daggers at the same time which is another nice benefit of using dual daggers and it's a nice option when you just want to slash everything in your path and don't want to cast stuff. Daggers have a really fast movement speed and with the raw damage of them being skilled accordingly with fate and with the correct stats you will deal really good and fast damage when you power sense these weapons. One final thing I want to mention is that by running a fate based build you can also run even more daggers if you're feeling spicy. Daggers are so light that it's really not that weird to run like 5 daggers at the same time. It's definitely not necessary because the two daggers I mentioned will do everything you want and more. But a good shout for this build is the Earth Steel Dagger, especially if you just like to slash things with the steel of the dagger. Because this thing has a very high fade scaling, so in terms of raw damage it will pack a punch. So alternatively you can switch it up and power stance daggers with this thing. And alternatively Blade of Calling is also worth mentioning in a fade based build. It's pretty much what you get if you would order the Black Knife from AliExpress. It's really just a more boring and bland copy paste of Black Knife. But it has this nice ingrained stagger when you use it on mobs. So if you're roaming through areas it's a nice tool to clean up mobs relatively easy. And finally I would also recommend to just get a dagger with Bloodhound step on it so you get that nice mobility and it fits the assassin team very well as well. Black Flame School of Incantations, you just want to get them all to be honest, except for Black Flame Blade, because you can't use it with these daggers. Let's first talk about the seal though, because the seal that goes really well with Black Flame Incantations is in fact the God Slayer seal, and is going to be our main seal. A really nice benefit to the seal is that you can pick it up really early on in the game, it's in Stormville as well, and it gives a nice buff to the damage output of all our Black Flame spells, so it's a really great fit for this build. Regarding the incantations themselves, the Black Flame Fireball is going to be your long range artillery bread and butter single target type of incantation. It is a fireball that hits really hard, has very long range and also has the sap mechanic. 
so it will always deal great damage. Then Scouring Black Flame is the AoE Black Flame spell that you'll want to use. It hits really hard as well and it has a nice range and spread. With its spread you can make sure to always hit everything in front of you basically. It has that sub mechanic as well. You do have to keep your positioning in mind though because it has this upward motion so the incantation requires some skill to it to really get the most out of it. Black Flame Ritual is another really nice AoE spell and you can also just use it as a defensive barrier that will pretty much kill off everything that is trying to reach you because it deals good damage and it also staggers whatever is trying to get to you so usually they won't be able to cross the fire itself. Very nice incantation for when you're exploring but it's also nice during boss fights because it will stay on the ground for a bit so you can combo it nicely with the other stuff in our kit. Noble Presence is another very useful incantation and going to be the crowd control incantation and roster. You can stun lock many enemies and a good number of bosses with it as you can see. While stun locking your opponents you can literally just kill them off like this. Just keep casting the spell and you will eventually kill them. Or you can use it to start a combo and set up for another ability when they're down on the ground. Finally, Black Flame's Protection is a very underrated spell in PvE. It increases physical damage negation with a whopping 35%, so you can get quite tanky with it, especially if you make sure to have some vigor as well. 35% reduced damage negation is definitely a very significant percentage, and that's why it's going to be our defensive buff incantation in the roster. Now that we're talking about buffs, you also want to get Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow. These are great buff spells that will be present in a lot of different builds that have some points spent in Fate, especially Golden Vow is nice with its buff that lasts quite long and the defensive aspect of this incantation and then flame grant me strength raises our fire damage which is nice because all the black flame spells are in fact fire based incantations you can combine them to get the most out of it flame grant me strength can't be cast at the same time as black flame protection however so you have to keep that in mind and you have to make a decision whether you want to deal extra damage or be more tanky for a certain fight Finally, and this one is locked behind killing Malekith, but it's a really cool incantation that fits the team and is one of the few other Destined Death abilities in the game, in addition to Black Knife's Blade of Death. After killing Malekith, trade in the Remembrance and get the Black Blade. This is pretty much a melee variation of the Blade of Death in terms of what it does, because it is exactly the same in terms of dealing damage. But it's a nice melee type of incantation that did get a buff not too long ago and that you can throw in the roster and just smash things with it and it fits the theme of the build. Its best usage is in my opinion to combine it with Blade of Death because these two actually stack and you can remove quite a significant chunk of the enemy's HP bar and it's pretty fun to see an HP bar shrink like this. Now with the entire roster lined up, we'll have one final spot in our memory slots open and this spot is going to go to the darkness spell. Now let me tell you something about this monster of a incantation. This incantation is the incantation in the history of incantations. Why you ask? I don't know, I didn't think that far ahead. Don't ask me what it does or how to use it or anything like that. Just accept that it's great, fits the team and that it's the final spell in the roster. <laughs> Now let's talk about stats. So for this build you want to soft cap fully on fate because everything scales with fate and the higher it gets the better. So get 80 fate. For a level 125 build you want to get at least 40 vigor so reach its first soft cap and in this build you don't need that much more for 125 at least in PvE because you have this thing. This thing makes you really tanky in a lot of fights and it allows us to fully cap on our damage based stat quite early on. Then get a good number of points in mind so you will always be comfortable. 30 is really more than enough and the rest can be put in endurance for chain casting and just more stamina which is always nice. For level 150 I would fully soft cap on vigor to become really tanky and then get some more points into endurance so you get even more stamina and more room to chain cast and swing your daggers which is especially nice when you're power stancing and it will also allow for better gear options. 
So regarding the starting class, it doesn't matter that much. But if you're starting a new playthrough with this build and you want to min-max it, then the Prophet is going to be the best class for this build. It has the highest points in our main stat, which is Fate, and a good portion of points in other stats that are relevant for us, while having a low number of points in sets that are irrelevant for this build, such as Intelligence. And so the Prophet is a very solid choice. Now regarding Talismans, there are quite some options for this build. I would definitely get the Dagger Talisman because it's the only talisman in the game that boosts critical damage with a really significant percentage at the same time as well so our misery cord will hit even harder i would also get the fire scorpion charm because we have a lot of fire based damage in our kit pretty much all our incantations are fire based and our misery cord itself has also fire based damage and then you will also want to run the gold free icon because a lot of our incantations are chargeable in fact so that juicy plus 15 percent extra damage will apply to a lot of different incantations in this build and therefore this talisman is a really solid choice for the final sword, I would recommend using the Shard of Alexander just because it will make both our Ashes of War deal more damage. Which is especially nice in the case of the Blade of Death since you can just spam it from a distance and the damage will become very high really quickly with this talisman. I would also recommend using the Assassin's Crimson Dagger in various parts of the game and make it the fifth interchangeable talisman in this build because this dagger will restore your HP every time you crit and with this build you will crit a lot and you can get the Assassin's Crimson Dagger pretty much at the start of the game. And alternatively, you can also run the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for the plus 20% reduced physical damage taken, which in combination with Black Flame Protection will make your damage negation go through the roof. And you can become very tanky with this build that way as well. For the Flask, you want to get the Flame Shrouding Crack tier to boost the damage of all our Black Flame Incantations and our Mystery Court and Flame of the Red Mains. And you want to combine that with the Holy Shrouding Crack tier to boost the damage of the Death and Death Incantation and Ashes of War. And also the damage of our black knife itself since it is wholly damage based. The combination of these two crystal tiers is great because it will cover all of the elemental damage in our kit and boost it. If you're still in the early game however and have not soft capped on fate yet then you can swap out the holy shrouding crack tier for the fate not crystal tier to get that plus 10 to your fate which helps out very well in the early parts of a playthrough. <laughs> Now assassins are naturally stealthy. But if you want to make stealth a part of your build, it's not that amazing in Elder Ring because it's just pretty useless against bosses. Bosses will just target you regardless of how stealthy you are trying to be. And instead, think you are a fool for trying to deceive them. But when you're exploring, it is a bit of a different story because it can be useful to get easy backstabs on a lot of different types of mobs. And with how we built this build, those backstabs will hit extremely hard. There is one piece in the game that helps you with being stealthy, which is the black knife armor. It muffles the sound of your footsteps, so in game you won't actually hear your footsteps anymore. It definitely helps with moving around very quietly to just kill off mobs in peace that would have otherwise aggroed you based on the sound you would have made with your steps. With that in mind, this piece is really the only piece in the game that gives off that assassin type of feel when you play, which is why you want it in this build. Combine this piece with the skeletal mask for the aesthetic, since this helmet just looks cool, you can't deny it and you'll have a very dangerous looking assassin. <laughs> Regarding the other two parts of your gear, you can wear whatever you want really. For example, the Black Knife Gauntlets in combination with the Beast Champion Graves gives decent armor and is what I'm running here and fit the aesthetic and theme very well as well. If you want to go above 50 points however, then you can run both parts of the Bullgoat set for this purpose. But you'll have to get some more equip load, either through running a talisman for that purpose or investing more points into endurance. It's not really that important to go above 50 points with this build and playstyle because you already have a lot of defense, hyper armor and mobility so it's not as necessary to reach that threshold but it's always a nice bonus if you really want it either way you will look like a true assassin like this and have the sounds of your footsteps removed making you extremely dangerous and capable of doing a lot when you're out in the open you can now go on your own rampage with this build you will just completely destroy everything in the game whether it's the early mid or late game it has covered you completely and it's just too much fun to play around with I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then make sure to give the video a like as that helps out a lot. And if you're still not subscribed then the time has officially come for you to hit that button and also hit the bell thing so you will be the first to get notified when I upload something. And finally let me know your thoughts in the comments.